so this this is um, this session is like a, a final session, like a closing session, but it's it's not really. It's more of a, a summary of the um, of the the events so far, and then um, a promise of things to come with um, Korea um, and the uh, a bit of an introduction to the uh, where the Congress will be held in 2023. Um, so I would just like to uh, do a, an acknowledgement of the Indigenous people, that uh, the same one that I did at the opening session. Um, so we acknowledge the First Peoples as custodians of the country from which we join this online conference. We pay our respects to the First Nations elders and current descendants of these countries. We especially commit to that part of our work as Greens that is guided and led by Indigenous peoples in addressing past injustices and preserving current Indigenous custodianship of the land. So welcome to this session. Um, and the first thing I'll hand over to, Suhi, is there anything else that I need to say? I think, I think that was all. Yep, that was. So yep, so now... I'll introduce Suhi, who is, uh, will speak on, is sort of co-hosting, um, co-facilitating this session with me. Thank you, Bob. Uh, our, so without further ado, we're going straight into our speakers who are representatives from our four federations of Global Greens. Our first speaker is Dr. Frank Habineza. Dr. Habineza is an environmentalist and a human rights, democracy and defense and security expert. He has been the member of Rwandan parliament since 2018 and a presidential candidate since 2017 representing the Democratic Green Party of Rwanda. Dr. Habineza has been the member of the Global Greens Coordination and a special advisor to the African Greens Federation. Now I will hand over this virtual microphone to Dr. Habineza. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Soy, uh, our moderator, and thank you also to uh, Bob, our convener. Uh, thank you uh, to all of you who have uh, managed to uh, attend uh, to this uh, joint uh, session. I see a great pleasure uh, for us to uh, address to you. On behalf of the African Greens Federation, uh, we are very pleased. Uh, early this morning, uh, I was able to join the Greens in Government session, uh, which was hosted by the New Zealand Greens in collaboration with the Australian Greens. It was a really wonderful session uh, that we learned a lot, and I was able to join the panel and uh, share our some of our experience from Africa. So it was quite uh, uh, something wonderful. Just being also in the Greens in Europe uh, session, and uh, it was also quite a learning experience here. Uh, as you have seen, uh, we uh, had an African Greens uh, session, uh, Greens Struggle for Democracy, uh, which had uh, two hours ago, uh, which we had a great uh, panel, uh, panelists uh, from Uganda and um, Egypt, and uh, of course also our host was also from Uganda, but we had a fellow a member of parliament from Rwanda, a region called Tintinsman, who was also presenting. Uh, it was a well uh, covered event. We had over uh, 30 uh, participants and uh, it was a lot of discussion. Uh, we highlighted uh, the struggle we're all going on uh, in different countries for Greens to get recognized as political parties. Uh, but also, uh, uh, once we get recognized, how it's also difficult to function as parties because after uh, getting uh, official registration, you'll find a lot of laws there which are making it so difficult for political parties to function. Like, for example, uh, you find that they uh, uh, make sure that political parties do not get financing either from local NGOs, a political party cannot have an NGO to support it, or even local companies cannot support a political party, and they make sure that all uh, the people who have jobs do not join an opposition party. So you find that it's quite a, a challenge, and if it takes to time of campaigning, there's a lot of harassment and uh, political persecution uh, to opposing uh, candidates. Uh, you find that the government uh, parties or ruling parties, they do all what is possible to stop people from joining campaign rallies, and they make sure that the media is uh, also uh, sp speaks on their side and the media gets biased, and they make sure that uh, they also join into uh, what we call like a corrupt activities like buying off people and voting or giving them some bribes like uh, with uh, some uh, commodities like sugar, salt, soap, uh, the night before the election, so that people can change their minds. And indeed, uh, people do change their minds, and they end up with uh, 
uh, bad uh, candidates here. Yeah. And uh, also you've seen that in Africa, the uh, electoral process is quite expensive. It's very difficult to, uh, to campaign uh, when you don't have a uh, huge sources of money because uh, uh, you find that all the government parties, they have, they're using state resources. Uh, so they, they, some of them are corrupt, but they also use uh, government resources. And it's a really big challenge uh, for uh, emerging green parties to function in such an environment. Uh, so we've also highlighted uh, uh, issues of where uh, most of the parties have also stood up against the big uh, corporations and against the uh, big Western powers, like our Green Party in Mauritius, uh, which has stood up uh, for rights uh, uh, about reparations uh, of people, descendants of the slaves uh, in Mauritius. Uh, we have asked for the Green Fund, and uh, we have even questioned the British government. They haven't succeeded, but they have made a big fight. And also they have uh, recently um, uh, made a big petition and a demonstration asking the US government to get out of uh, an archipelago called the Chagos, uh, which is a territory of Mauritius, but which has been taken over by the US uh, because uh, the US has a military base there controlling the Indian Ocean and the French have also base there, but it's owned by the US. So the people, the Greens in Mauritius have made a big stand on that. And uh, of course, we also had the Greens struggle in Rwanda, how it took us uh, um, over four years, four years to get registered as a party and all our efforts and also thanked all the Greens all over the world who stood with us, the Greens from Australia, Tabo Brown, Greens from Europe, uh, from Sweden, from Germany, from Belgium, from America, all over the world. And we thank you for the petitions you sent to the Iranian government. Uh, it really made a big, you know, a big impact here. So our friends in Egypt also highlighted how now that it is even difficult to have even an opposition party. And for now, they don't even have an opposition party in Egypt. It's very difficult to do anything as a party. Uh, or any political party. So it's only one party, which is from Mediterranean, yeah, so it's quite a challenge in Egypt, yeah. And uh, we have highlighted issues in West Africa, which are very alarming because we have a, a coup d'etat, uh, military coup government coup d'etat in, in Mali, uh, which is in the country for the last few months. And also we just had a recent one in, um, in Burkina Faso. And uh, as you also had in Guinea, uh, also there have been a coup d'etat there. And um, now uh, all our parties, green parties there, they are having a very difficult time to function as parties in such a um, very difficult environment. Also, uh, uh, we had a chance, of course, for Greens in Senegal to enter into government, but they are still uh, are trying to re-establish their parties to be stronger again. And uh, yeah, there are different uh, challenges here and there, but it's, the green speed is too strong. So we all, um, all agree that uh, to be, uh, as a green party, we must be in government, we must be in parliament. We must have political power because that's what will make a difference because uh, we can't afford to be outside the decision-making institution. Though it's difficult to enter to these institutions, but we want to be there. And we have highlighted our Kenyan Greens uh, uh, spirit. They wish to have a proportional representation because it's very difficult in the system uh, in Kenya, which is like a the British system, is it fast track uh, past uh, whatever the winner takes it all system uh, for them to win any seat. So they have called for proportional representation, uh, which we do have now in Rwanda, and that's what has helped us enter to parliament and also to be in the Senate here. Yeah. So we think that uh, we should support uh, that uh, movement of proportional representation as green so that uh, other green parties can enter to parliament here. Yeah. Moving forward, we do have another session uh, which will take place in one hour from now or for five minutes from now. Uh, it will be a uh, sharing of experiences of green parliamentarians and other former government leaders uh, on how to strengthen the green parties and winning elections. So we are looking forward to all of you to participate in two of uh, these sessions. And uh, also, uh, uh, I also bring greetings from our president, President Adam Mugaba, uh, the chairperson of the Green Federation of Africa. Uh, you know, we thank you for standing with him. He has been very sick and uh, he survived narrowly. Yeah, we thank you for all your support. Uh, he's now in France and uh, trying to recover. Um, so uh, we plan to have our next African Greens Congress uh, in uh, either May or June this year. So we are looking forward to your continued support and participation. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you very much, Frank. Uh, now I'd like to introduce I'd like to introduce Naja. Um, Naja is the APGF. Asia Pacific representative to the Global Greens, um, and she's an agricultural engineer. And um, 
and she works in landscaping and irrigation. And she's also has been involved in the Green Party of Lebanon since 2007. So over to you, Naja. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> and hello, everybody. Thanks for this platform. This is a very strong vocal platform. And uh, I would like to welcome everybody to be vocal for the Greens and make the Greens stronger and stronger in the future. Welcome the 96 participants, about 80 attendees. And this is a very valuable audience that we would like, I'd like to explain more about the functioning of how Asia Pacific Greens work. Let's see if the screen moves. Okay. So at APGF, I would like to start with a message from APGF. Our challenges all over the globe are interconnected and so are our solutions. And this is the platform that we are connecting with each other today. I'm going to pass through the contents of um, mapping APGF countries over the map. And then I will talk about the structure and organization of the APGF achievements until the end of 2021 then about the goals that we have in the plan for 2024. And in the end, I'm going to talk about the event, this event. In front of you, I hope everybody can see that the region of Asia Pacific here, we have two colors of green, one dark and one light. The dark green are the full APGF members and the light green is the associate APGF members. I'm talking to an audience that might not know what are these, but th these are the works of a long year, long years with APGF since its inception in Australia. In this, in this map, I'm going to go the, the, through the flow of the uh, full APGF members from New Zealand to Australia, to India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Mongolia, Korea, Taiwan, Japan, Iraq, and the small Lebanon over here in the Middle East. And the associate members are, I'm going to start from the left, um, Palestine, Jordan, Indonesia, where we have three parties in Indonesia, Philippines, Papua, Papua New Guinea, and Solomon Islands. All of these form the uh, council of the Asia Pacific Federation, where they meet on a monthly basis, held by a, a very energetic secretariat. And the council is, uh, works with two main bodies, the networks and committees or groups. In the networks, we have a very important network that is very uh, energetic uh, with its programs. The programs that we have in the women's network are within the uh, gender equity and the webinars and uh, uh, the gen they have the gender equity train uh, toolkit and they train the trainer and they have the uh, webinars. And let me check if I miss anything on that. Uh, mentorship program, yes. And the APGF WN, that is the A A Asia Pacific Green Women Federation, makes sure that the women are leaders when they assume responsibility. And their determination is the main drive to succeed. The other network is the Young Greens Network that we give a, a lot of value to reactivate and relaunch in the coming mandate. These are the change makers. And we believe a lot that they are going to move APGF and the Global Greens to the future we need. The future we need that is a, a just future environmentally and politically. And the committees, the membership committee works on uh, increasing the number of uh, countries in the APGF. 
uh, within the political activities, we have the policy makers. We already did 20 policies that were tr translated into eight languages that every group in this, uh, every uh, party, Green Party in, in their respective countries, tailor it according to their needs. And there is the management group, the MAC committee who, uh, that uh, um, administrate the, administrates the work coming in the APGF. The policy committee, which is another, uh, this committee that I, I was talking about, and the most needed committee, which is the fundraising, and IDC is the support system of APGF in the funding programs. <clears throat> In 2020 and 2021, APGF focused not only on programs, but also on the comprehension of grassroots and local identity. That means that each respective country acts as its own, um, as its own uh, decision maker within the overarching goals that we have as uh, Greens of the Asia Pacific. We have two wings in APGF that we are working on, the capacity building for members and the structuring of the APGF, strengthening the structure. In the capacity building, there were 10, 20 templates of policies developed. They were translated into eight languages. And in the women network, there was a gender equity training, gender of equity for the trainers, uh, train the trainers and the toolkit and women's network webinar series, which were, were very inspiring, and the women, uh, women's leadership mentoring program. Uh, and also the member support of the database in some parties. Strengthening of the structure goes into six points for the project management trainings, fundraising programs, revision of policies and procedures, strengthening networks, fundraising programs and relaunching the Asia Pacific Green, Young Green Network, uh, which we have high hopes on it. And here in the picture, we can see Snegda making a better network when she went to Glasgow in, in, uh, in the COP26. Our goals for the 2024 are continued focus on supporting our member parties, equity and empowerment, strong governance and finances, international collaboration like we do here on this platform and have our global voice. APGF is there to connect to thousands of leaders pushing for a fairer future. And here we can see in the picture, uh, the young people in Australia striving to push the change in the future that we want to see. Um, this event, as many events that gather a lot of green, like-minded people, it, greens should connect here or over the globe and complement their green agendas together. Otherwise, the globe will suffer further division and doubt in the future justice. Thanks everybody who had and was involved in bringing us together here and see you in South Korea next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Naja. Thank you uh, for the comprehensive presentation and the message. Um, I would like to take this time to request our speakers to speak in a moderate pace uh, for our interpreters. Um, thank you for our speakers and thank you for your understanding. Our next speakers are the representatives from FPBA, the Federation of Green Parties of the Americas. FPBA will have two speakers today who are Patricia Maldonado, the lead representative of FPBA to the Global Greens Coordination, a member of the Global Greens Executive Committee and an official delegate of the Partido Verde Ecologista de Mexico in the FPBA. Another speaker from the Federation is Alejandro Aguilera. He is currently National Secretary General of the Ecological Movement of Venezuela, 
Deputy of the National Assembly and Principal Deputy before the Mercosur Parliament. He is a delegate in the Federation of Green Parties of the Americas. Most recently, he was elected as Executive Co-President of the FPBA. Patricia will be speaking first in English and Alejandro will be speaking in English. The virtual stage is all yours, Patricia. Thank you very much. Dear friends, I am Patricia Maldonado, the lead representative to the Global Greens Coordination. I am here to thank, in the name of the Federation of Green Parties of the Americas, all the people involved in the organization of this event, a global wide reunion that is making possible to hear the green voices around the world. The goal of our Federation today is to contribute to this important effort by putting in your agenda, our agenda. We present two topics in hope of sharing with you our vision, ancient knowledge, and new and future hopes. In the Americas, we believe that the best way to connect with each other, with every corner of the world, with every green party, is to get to know each other, starting by better understanding our different idiosyncrasies, our cultural heritage, our challenges, and yes, also our successes. This is why we are hosting a conference called Mega Diversity in the Americas. It's preservation through the vision of the indigenous peoples. Around half of the territory of our continent is mega diverse. This is a wealth that demands great responsibility because we are guardians of enormous and wonderful forms of life. And that is why we talk so much about it. That is why our projects are developed around it. And that is why the Green Parties of the Americas work to preserve it. And we are also so fortunate in the Americas that many of our nations have another incredible wealth. This wealth is a life human heritage of knowledge and love for nature in the form of indigenous nations that have kept not only their languages and customs, they live every day, their culture, their vision, their love and respect for nature. And in countries like Mexico, Guatemala and Peru, whose speakers are part of this session, the indigenous peoples who created great civilizations are part of us and have a lot to share in terms of preservation of our mega diversity. And the Federation of Green Parties of the Americas wants to share this with you all. The other topic that we present is a session called Growth of the Political Ecology in the Americas. Yes, because we are growing and we want you to know it because we are really proud of the work done by our member parties in very difficult conditions. In our region, life for Greens can be really tough. Our parties suffer persecution, not only from our electoral opponents, but also from the highest instances of government. This is happening at levels that some Green parties in other regions of the world cannot even imagine. Because politics is judicialized and even whole executive committees are sent to jail for no other reason than trying to register a Green Party. Our Green candidates are menaced and even killed by the economic interests we attack while defending the mega diversity we have inherited with the obligation to preserve it. And the attacks also come from those who are against our work for human rights and social justice. And yes, even with all these obstacles, the political ecology is growing in the Americas, and we want to share with you our successes and our hopes. And talking about sharing, the Federation of Green Parties of the Americas decided to share its speaking time in this meeting. Therefore, it is my pleasure to introduce Alejandro Aguilera, Executive President. Alejandro, please. Muchas gracias, Patilde, y, Mati, eh, Pati, y gracias a todos los, todos los organizadores de este evento. Eh, recién electo como copresidente ejecutivo de la Federación de Partidos Verdes de las Américas eh, y viendo que los verdes del continente están apostando a la juventud, 
y a los liderazgos de las mujeres. Se consolida al ver la estructura recién electa de la federación. Hemos decidido, eh, a pesar de nuestras realidades y una gran adversidad, con democracias muy frágiles en todo el continente, ya lo explicaba Patricia muy claramente que somos perseguidos, eh, nuestra política es judicializada, eso no va a parar los próximos dos años de esta nueva directiva que podamos maximizar las redes de comunicación dentro de la federación. Y uno de los objetivos que tenemos nosotros es fortalecer una red parlamentaria que nos permita no, no solamente defendernos en el continente, sino también promocionar e impulsar las políticas verdes a, lo, a, a todo lo largo de nuestra América. Esto significa que hemos hecho pequeños ejemplos de cómo poder asistir a países que no existen los partidos verdes, pero que ya hay equipos promotores, como el caso de Paraguay, como ahora próximamente el caso de Ecuador, estamos fortaleciendo el partido de Haití y, y son escenarios interesantes en la cual pudimos a través del diálogo nuevamente eh, eh, incorporar al Partido Verde de Colombia dentro de la federación, que es uno de los partidos más grandes de nuestro continente. Eso significa que nuestras políticas, a pesar de nuestras adversidades, no van en mal el camino y nuestra ruta total de la federación es fortalecer a cada partido en el continente. Por eso es tan importante invertir en los liderazgos jóvenes, en las mujeres y en sobre todo en la ideología. Saber diferenciar nuestro pensamiento verde de un momento electoral. En el caso de las Américas, una de las cosas que más estamos llevando en nuestros debates del día a día sabiendo desmarcar nuestra ideología de un momento netamente electoral. Nuestra ideología es netamente verde y nosotros no somos ni de derecha ni de izquierda, somos ecologistas. Por eso los tratamos de imponer a cada uno de, de nuestros equipos promotores que están naciendo en los continentes y nos ha ido muy bien. Y una de nuestras prioridades es que en todos los eventos organizados, tanto por la Global Green o como por Naciones Unidas, como en el caso de la cumbre de cambio climático, no solamente estén los militantes eh, eh, normales de una directiva del partido, no. Nosotros queremos hacer actos de presencia con nuestros ministros, con nuestros parlamentarios ante el mercado sudamericano, con nuestros diputados federales, eh, 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 pero para que todo eso se pueda hacer concretado, tenemos que conectarnos. Y es una de las prioridades dentro de la federación. Por eso la experiencia de las distintas federaciones, que las podamos intercambiar, siempre va a tener como norte y ruta el fortalecimiento de la ecopolítica en el mundo. Gracias por todo. Thank you very much, um, Patty. Gracias, Alejandro. Um, I'd like to introduce now. Uh, sorry, I've disappeared. I'd like to introduce now um, Jean Lambert, who's the European Green Party representative um, to the Global Greens. Um, Jean has been, uh, was a British MEP, member of the uh, European Parliament for 20 years. Uh, and she was a, a member of the Employment and Social Affairs Committee and active on Civil Liberties Committee. She also chaired the Parliamentarian Delegate for Relationships with South Asia for 10 years. And now she's involved in the European Greens. So uh, welcome, Jean. Thank you very much for the uh, invitation. And thank you all to have worked, who've worked so hard to put together this um, amazing event. So this is a great opportunity to hear directly from so many Greens across the world, to learn from each other, to develop our work together, and to make the connections that make our movement stronger, more resilient and more effective. So we know we need to connect for green action. The European Green Party brings together nearly 40 parties from across the whole of Europe. Um, some are from the 27 countries of the European Union, but not all. And like other federations, we have some parties that are still working to put down roots and find their own political space. And we have di activities directed to a number of them. But however, we also have others that are in, have a strong presence at the local level and a number that are in national coalition governments. And Frank, 
is right proportional representation in those countries really helps. So the European Green Party sessions today are focused on what can Greens do when they are part of the decision making. What are the real differences you can make to people's lives if you're a mayor or if you're a minister? And what are the compromises and the costs? And these sessions also reflect part of our work programme for the coming year. We're supporting thousands of local councillors through the development of our online platform for local councillors and an in-person conference in Spain in May 2022. That's COVID permitting, of course. And we're also working to increase the contacts, the understanding, the action between Greens in national and regional governments themselves and with our other Green parties to help keep our movement strong. That's through our Greens in government meetings and our party leaders meetings amongst other things. But as the uh, European Green Party, we also work with partners from foundations, from think tanks and FIEG, the Federation of Young European Greens. And there are also what I think will be excellent sessions later today on the engagement of young people and also on the difficult issue of mining for the resources needed for a, grand, a green transition. Can we avoid the pollution and the gross inequity of the past, which are still creating so much injustice today? When some of those sessions fit with those of other federations, so it's great that we can watch all of those later and see how we can continue to connect over the coming months up to the Green Congress in Korea next year. Sorry, not used to speaking these days. And as um, the EGP, we adopted our activity plan, our work programme for 2022 at our council meeting last December, which unfortunately was yet another meeting online due to the COVID situation. But we've learned a lot over the last two years about how to improve our digital connections with our parties. And we're now offering a range of activities to reach and connect with green-minded people through webinars, regular film screenings, and interviews with green personalities, which are all available on the European Green websites if you want to dip into those. But we're desperate to get back to in-person meeting to re reconnect with our parties, not least our council meeting in June this year, and then our big Congress in December. And we're also planning other events, including activities in the days before the UN conference in Stockholm in Sweden in June, which will mark 50 years since the first UN conference on the environment. In terms of the campaign priorities, we want to continue the work from 2021, which cover almost every aspect of people's lives. So the climate crisis and the green recovery. In the climate crisis, we'll focus on end re ending reliance on fossil fuels, including removing the enormous subsidies these polluting industries still receive, and supporting the fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty. We'll work on tackling fuel poverty, and of course, we'll, we'll recognise the need for international climate action. And this will include building on the great work done by the Global Greens COP26 working group and the inspiring international green presence in Glasgow. So we want to see what more we can do together ahead of COP27 in Egypt this year. On the green recovery, the European Union has developed a number of funding programmes designed to deliver a Green New Deal, which was the European Green Party manifesto for 2009. So other parties are now catching up. And then that there's a post recovery, a post COVID recovery and resilience facility, which is worth billions of euros. So as EGP, we're working with our parties and civil society to follow the money to make sure it really helps to transform our societies in a way that's both green and socially just. 
And we're also adding a third campaign this year about a trans inclusive feminist campaign, building on a resolution from 2020 on the rights of transgender people. And politically, we'll be strengthening our work on challenging the narrative of the far right, where we can see its influence in the elections this year for the French presidency, elections in Hungary and in Sweden. And we know that this is an issue we all face as Greens. We know the populists and the far right work across borders to push their agenda, which is anti-environment, anti-feminist, anti-diversity, anti-democracy, everything we as Greens are not. So we want to work together to widen democratic space, protect human rights, and ensure the future of our planet and its rich biodiversity. So we look forward to the coming months of our work together as part of Global Greens and are very much looking forward to the con Congress in Seoul next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jean, for your message and uh, your speech. Um, uh, before we move to the next speaker, I would like to ask Dr. Habineza if there's anything you missed. Uh, I know you have another session starting in 10 minutes or less, but I realize that you haven't used your time fully. So would you like to uh, add? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much uh, uh, for giving us this uh, another chance to speak once again. Uh, maybe I thought that perhaps we could also uh, tell a little bit more about the African Greens Federation. Um, uh, well, the African Greens Federation was uh, officially uh, established in 2010 after so many years of uh, trying to have a political federation. Uh, of course, the first Greens came also to uh, the first Congress in Canberra, Australia. But that's when we had our first Congress uh, in Uganda and we established uh, the, uh, the structures of the federation. We went on to uh, have a secretariat in Burkina Faso, uh, where we have a functioning secretariat, and um, uh, we do also have a, a regist official registration as an intergovernmental organization uh, in Burkina Faso. And um, so of course, we are very grateful to Green Forum Sweden, uh, which has stood with us uh, for all that time. And um, until recently, uh, for about almost 10 years, that we have been able to do a lot of activities and uh, we have. Uh, been able to establish regional federations. So we do have the East African Greens Federation, the West African Greens Federation, Northern African Greens Federation, and Southern African Greens Federation, and the Central African Greens Federation. So we have been able to do that. And uh, uh, the moment we're also working on having uh, uh, the African Young Greens uh, 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 Federation, uh, that started the process, but we are trying to do more uh, on a national level to have uh, strong national Young Greens uh, uh, networks on a national level. Uh, also in Rwanda, we have done that to have the national, uh, the youth greens uh, on the provincial level, and also when it on the provincial level. So we are going down, down, uh, and later we have uh, national structures. So we are encouraging everybody else to do that, and especially uh, that you now the Global Young Greens has uh, uh, accepted that all the representatives of the Global Young Greens will be uh, from uh, national parties. So this is a great achievement to us, uh, all of us uh, from Africa and other Greens. So. Um, the Greens, we are going strong, of course, as the challenges we have had, uh, they are quite many, uh, but we, we are working together to see that uh, we become strong, we have uh, Greens uh, in government and climate in Madagascar, uh, we have uh, uh, the party as a minister, we also have Greens in climate in Congo, uh, Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of Congo, several MPs there, and also they are also in the local uh, uh, structures. Uh, as I mentioned in Rwanda, we have uh, uh, two MPs and one senator, and uh, uh, we've had also some time in Egypt and uh, also uh, some MPs from Kenya. Uh, they are still now trying to get back to parliament. And we have had an MP in Chad. They are still working again to go back to a parliament. In Mauritius, they have been both in government and in parliament, so they are quite a strong party. The movement is going strong. In Uganda, they have tried to go into elections. They are still trying their best to enter. And uh, of course, at least they tried to uh, campaign for parliament. The last elections. So I would say that uh, right now the upcoming events we have is Kenya. We have uh, general elections in August, uh, which uh, of course need us to start with them. And uh, we, as the African Greens Federation, are uh, working in cooperation, of course, with our uh, sister party in Egypt, the Egyptian Greens, uh, to see that we can facilitate and organize the upcoming COP27, which will be in Egypt. 
and uh, we are looking forward to work with all of you uh, from Europe and from over the world and uh, having a green presence, a strong green presence uh, in the next COP in Egypt. Yeah. And of course, uh, um, as I mentioned, uh, uh, we, I was the past president uh, of the Federation for the last eight years, so we have had a new uh, structure which is adding its mandate this year. So we are organizing to have another Congress uh, this year, uh, which will also have uh, to elect new leaders and uh, put up new uh, strengthen the, the structures of the Federation. So we're looking forward to your collaboration for that. And we hope that by the time we have the next Global Congress in Korea, we shall be strong once again and uh, moving. Yeah. So in Rwanda, we'll have uh, parliamentary elections uh, next year, um, the presidential elections in 2024. Um, and uh, so we look forward to working with us again more closely together. Because I mean, as I mentioned, uh, elections in Africa is a war, it's a battle of uh, It's not, a, it's, it's a fight for democracy, a fight for freedom of speech, it's a fight for freedom of the media. All those things are denied. And uh, you can't do this when you don't have your uh, brothers and sisters all over the world. You can't manage here. So we're looking forward to more collaboration and uh, standing together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Habimeta. As we know, uh, our next Global Greens Congress will be held in Seoul and be hosted by Green Party Korea. Let us watch a short clip prepared from Green Party Korea. In 2012, on the 3rd of July, the Ideruna Shirebabun The co-leaders of Green Party Korea have joined us today to introduce Green Party Korea and invite us to the 2023 Congress. Now, let us welcome uh, one of the co-leaders of Green Party Korea, Yewon Kim. 안녕하세요. Hi. It's nice, nice to meet you. 
저는 한국녹색당 공동대표 김여원입니다. 네, 만나 뵙게 돼서 너무 반갑고요. 저희 공동대표이신 김찬희 대표님도 지금 여기 참여해 계신데 혹시 인사 가능하세요? 네, 안녕하세요. 녹색당 공동대표 김찬희입니다. 오늘 행사 감명 깊게 보았습니다. 내년 대한민국 서울에서 모두 만나 뵀으면 좋겠습니다. 감사합니다. 네, 저와 함께 공동대표를 맡고 있는 찬희님이 인사를 해주셨습니다. 네, 저희 2022년 한국녹색당에서 있을 주요 사업에 대해서 소개를 하고자 합니다. 먼저 어, 이번에는 한국에서 큰 선거가 있는데요. 대통령 선거와 지방선거입니다. 3월에 대통령 선거가 있고 이제 6월에는 지방선거가 치러지게 되었습니다. 어, 안타깝게 한국녹색당은 대선 후보를 내지는 못했습니다. 하지만 지방선거에서는 몇 명의 후보가 출마해서 각 지역의 녹색당의 의제를 알리는 일을 하고자 합니다. 한국녹색당은 어, 올해로 올해 3월이 되면 창당을 맞이한 지 10년이 됩니다. 기후위기는 세계적으로 뜨거운 이슈임에도 한국의 타 정당들 뿐만 아니라 정부 차원에서 적극 대응하지 못하고 있습니다. 한국녹색당은 시대적 요구를 대변해야 하는 정치적 포지션에 놓여 있습니다. 올해 선거를 통해서 재생에너지와 생태적 농업, 지역 커뮤니티를 기반으로 하는 이런 자립, 그리고 자족적인 사회 연, 연대 경제 속에서 삶을 영위해 나가는 지역 주민의 삶의 전환을 제시하는 과제를 수행하고자 합니다. 그리고 두 번째로 안정적인 당 체계를 마련하고 활동 당원들을 증가시키고자 합니다. 어, 올해 예정된 지방선거 특성상 그 지역 내 인지도가 굉장히 중요한데 꾸준히 지역 활동에 참여해온 후보가 드뭅니다. 지역 녹색당이 지역 현안에 꾸준히 개입하고 그것이 시민들의 일상 속으로 스며들어서 안정과 지지를 적극적으로 끌어내는 한 해를 만들고자 합니다. 22년 어, 지방선거. 저... 네. 네, 죄송합니다. 제가 그 지금 어, 통역이 어, 영어 부분에 안 나와서 한 번만 안내를 한번 하고 그런 다음에 다시 시작해 주셔도 괜찮을까요? 네, 감사합니다. 네. 처음부터 다시 해 주시지는 안 하셔도 돼요. 어, so uh, I realized that uh, we there was a bit of a confusion when it comes to translation uh, the interpretation channel. Uh, for the Korean to English uh, interpretation, please click the Korean channel, not the English channel. If you click the Korean channel, you'll be able to hear the Korean inter the English interpretation of Korean. 네, 감사합니다. 어디부터 하면 될까요? <웃음> 이게 처음에 <웃음> 뭔가 안 들렸나 봐요. 그래서 혹시 처음부터 다시 해 주실 수 있을까요? 네, 감사합니다. 아, 네, 아, 안녕하세요. 만나 뵙게 돼서 반갑습니다. 네, 저는 22년도 한국녹색당에서 있을 주요 사업에 대해서 소개해 드리고자 합니다. 먼저 어, 올해 있을 중요한 그 선거들에 대해서 설명을 해 드리겠습니다. 올해 한국은 3월에 대통령 선거, 6월에 지방선거가 있습니다. 안타깝게 대선 후보를 내지는 못했지만 지방선거에는 몇 명의 후보가 출마해서 각 지역에서 녹색당의 의제를 알리는 일을 하고자 합니다. 한국녹색당은 올해 3월 창당을 맞이한 지 10년이 됩니다. 기후위기는 세계적으로 뜨거운 이슈인데도 한국에서는 좀 정부 차원에서 적극 대응하지 못하고 있습니다. 그래서 한국녹색당은 시대적 요구를 대변해야 하는 정치적 포지션에 있다고 볼수 있습니다. 올해 선거를 통해서 재생에너지와 생태적 농업, 지역 커뮤니티를 기반으로 하는 자립, 자족적인 사회 연대 경제 속에서 삶을 영위해 나가는 지역 주민의 삶의 전환을 제시해야 하는 그런 과제를 수행하고자 합니다. 두 번째로는 안정적인 당 체계 마련 및 활동 당원의 증가 중요한 목표 중에 하나로 잡았습니다. 올해 지방선거의 특성상 지역 내 인지도가 굉장히 중요한데요. 꾸준히 지역 활동에 참여해온 후보가 드뭅니다. 
어, 지역 녹색 당이 지역 현안에 꾸준히 개입하고 그것이 시민들의 일상 속으로 스며들어서 인정과 지지를 적극적으로 끌어내는 그런 한 해를 만들고자 합니다. 2022년 지방선거를 조직화의 수단으로 삼기 위해 많은 노력을 하고 있습니다. 이를 통해서 일상의 정치 활동을 활발하게 만드는 것이 목표입니다. 네, 마지막으로 녹색당의 정치인 양성을 위한 교육 프로그램 기획에 대해서 말씀드리고 싶습니다. 아, 마, 마지막이 아니라 네, 마지막은 또 하나 더 있네요. <웃음> 지방선거가 끝나면 녹색당의 가치를 내면한 정치인의 양성을 위해 교육 프로그램을 기획하고자 합니다. 이 기획은 선거가 끝난 후 본격적으로 시행할 계획입니다. 한국이 보다 기후정의와 차별 불평, 불평등 문제에 적극적으로 정책을 펴고 목소리를 낼수 있도록 활동가와 정치인 양성이 시급하다고 느끼고 있습니다. 탄소 시계는 약 7년 몇 개월 정도가 남았지만 우리의 삶은 그 이후에도 이어질 것입니다. 조금이라도 더 자유롭게 숨쉴수 있는 미래의 한국 사회를 만들기 위해서 당내 청년 정치인들을 교육해서 2년 뒤에 치러질 국회의원 선거에 대비하고자 합니다. 그리고 마지막으로 이제 세계 녹색당 총회 준비에 대해서 간단히 언급하면서 마치겠습니다. 네, 내년이 드디어 세계 녹색당 총회가 네, 저희 한국에서 열리는 해입니다. 이런 소중한 행사를 한국에서 개최하고 세계 녹색당 동료들이 찾아오는 것을 굉장히 영광으로 생각하고 있습니다. 각국의 주요 현안을 공유하고 녹색당이 지구를 살리기 위해 커다란 연대의 물결을 만들어 어, 가는 것에 활발한 공론의 장이 되기를 기대하고 있습니다. 내년에 한국에서 뵙겠습니다. 네, 감사합니다. Oh, Sorry, Sophie, did you say something? <laughs> yes, uh, according to our... Um, oh, I'm getting Korean. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, yes. sorry. So, yes, um, according to our run sheet... <laughs> oh, <I> right. Would... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for, the, for that rundown on Korean politics, k e w o n It's um, very interesting, and I'm really looking forward to finally Uh, making it to Korea for our Congress. And uh, this, uh, this event has given us a very good um, uh, start in, uh, in planning for the Congress. We've learned a lot. So thank you all very much for, uh, for coming to this um, session and uh, enjoy, the rest of the, um, enjoy the rest of the sessions. Um, it's uh, end of the day for me, so I will catch up with... Uh, what's happened overnight tomorrow. So thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. All right. Um, so I would like to thank our speakers who shared the message of each federation. Without your contribution, we would not have been able to have this session. Um, and we must thank all the organizers and the interpreters. Thank you so much. Uh, we have other sessions uh, running even after the joint session. Please enjoy the rest of the session and see you all next year in Seoul. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Sufi.